Okay, so now we're submitting our offers and the contract walkthrough. Okay, so this is where the 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 real the rubber hits the road, if you will. So uh, I'm going to show you guys a couple different ways on how this actually happens. So the submitting of offer and contract walkthrough. Um, now we we've already kind of figured our what our offer is through our deal analyzer, right? So that's our calculator. That's what we use to figure out our margins. Um, how much profit is going to be on the table. All of that is done in the deal analyzer. So once we identify that, we just need to simply fill out the purchase and sale agreement, okay, and and sign it, right? Now, there's a couple different ways to go about this moment. And uh, you can either, you know, like what I love to do is sign the contracts like, you know, real with my, my uh, Apple Pencil here and then send off my my uh, executed contract that way uh, via email as a PDF to the client and or you could set up DocuSign. DocuSign is, is an industry standard and it works really, really well. Um, and so that's the other way that we, we do it is that we'll have our purchase and sale agreements set up in DocuSign and so that when we, um, when we hit a, a, an agreement, we set up the, the, we fill out the purchase and sale agreement via DocuSign and send it out that way. Okay, and that way it's all digitally signed. There's no, it happens immediately and you can actually track um, the email process. So if you're unfamiliar with DocuSign, just know that it's a really, really good way of getting and collecting uh, signatures on contracts. Okay, so it's either that or kind of the old school way with a new school twist, which is signing it on your iPad, sending that PDF over with your signature uh, for them. Okay, so those are the two different ways that we uh, submit an offer to the seller. Okay, now let's go through the purchase and sale agreement here. Now this is, uh, it's actually really simple. This is a purchase and sale agreement that is in the deal analyzer file. So this is on the downloadable content. And this, um, we'll go through this here. I have it uh on my iPad as well. So we can um, go through this. Now the, it's very, very simple. Um, I just want to highly stress that. Number one, read it all the way through, you know, before you take any action or you send it off to anybody. Um, take the time. I know this sounds obvious. Read it. Uh, it's very, very simple to understand. Make adjustments. You might need to make adjustments. This is a template. Can't stress this enough. This is a template. It is universal. It's designed to be used uh, in multiple different states. You have to um, you have to uh, make sure that you uh, put in which state you're operating in on this form, um, just because it, it references it in one spot. But outside of that, it is it's a great universal contract. I've been using this for years. I've had a lot a lot of success. In fact, I can tell you that I've never had anything. Uh, bad or negative happen as a result of this purchase and sale agreement. So I feel really good and comfortable with it, but make sure you do your own due diligence as you go through this. So it's a two page purchase and sale agreement. Uh, it's again, very simple to fill out. You can see seller's name, address, the APN number, the earnest money amount, the offer price, inspection timeline, closing date, initials. And then on the second page there, the other provisions. Okay, this is a blank spot for you to write in any um, terms or special conditions that you would want to uh, put in there. So, and, and I, don't, I don't use this very often. Okay, so just, you know, most of the time it's just blank and nothing. Um, but from time to time we'll use, use it. And an example might be, um, you know, the, uh, the barbecue to stay with the house or um, the car to stay with the house or, you know, something, something that's just kind of oddball, weird, but you need to write it into the contract that's special and unique. Um, this is where you do it. So uh, it's very, very simple and uh, it allows that flexibility. Okay. So uh, again, here on my iPad, um, when, when I go out in the field, this is, I mean, the, it can't get much better than this. I'll show you, you know, you can, uh, just hand write in whatever you want here um, in the seller's name here known as the address 
Okay, the APN number is like one, two, three, dash, two, five, whatever. Two, five, six, five, five, four, three. This is an example. Uh, earnest, the earnest money deposit, $500. Okay, the, pr the price that we're going to pay for the, the property, 200 grand. Okay, the buyer has up to 14 days for inspection. We're going to close on June 1st, 2020. Okay, and A. And initials cross this off because I'm not going to put any new provisions in here. I'm going to put uh, today's date. Buyer Eric B. Whoops. That's my signature. Eric B. Boom. So this is a, an executed purchase and sale agreement. It's just that simple. Okay. Um, so oftentimes I type it. I don't, I'm not usually, you know, um, doing it handwritten, although from time to time I have, um, but that's just as simple as it is. Okay. So, um, again, if you have any more questions about this, just take the, it's really quite simple to, to understand. Um, I'll tell you what, I, I have a funny story. The first time I went out and did this process, did, uh, met with a seller and was getting a property under contract. I got to admit, I hadn't read the purchase and sale agreement yet. And, and it was kind of one of those scenarios where, um, you know, I wasn't, I put out marketing, but it was kind of like the, the phone rang, right? And you're like, oh, shocked. And okay, this is actually happening. And then, then they're like, yeah, we want to, we want to meet with you. Okay, great. And you know, go out to the property. And, and I remember meeting with them and it was like my first appointment ever. And, and I walked around the property and we negotiated and they said, yes. And I remember just being like, uh, holy cow, my first appointment, they said, yes. Like, uh, what do I do? Holy cow. I'll never forget this moment. Um, I, I walked back out to my car. I had a purchase and sale agreement printed out in my car. Um, I grabbed it. I went back into the house and I read the purchase and sale agreement line by line in front of them just to make sure that they understood it. But who was I really reading it? I was reading it for myself because I didn't know. Um, and it was really, you know, an awkward moment, but it was a learning lesson for myself uh, that, man, you have way more confidence and you're setting yourself up to win obviously if you read your contracts and you're very comfortable with them um don't do what i did and uh luck out on your first go and make you know just oh god it was it was um something else so i always tell that story just to remind people get comfortable with it it matters okay so Here's a couple other contracts that go along with the wholesale process, an assignment agreement and a memorandum walkthrough. So uh, this is going to be in the downloadable content as well. Um, your your affidavit or and memorandum of real estate purchase and sale agreement. That's just that is um, you going down to the county office and declaring that that there is an open contract. OK, so you're stating that and um, so that somebody can't go around you and, um, you, know, you know, kind of try to snake the deal away from you. OK, so not that this this, frankly, it's really rare and and we don't always do this, but it is a security step uh, by filling that out. It's very simple. You can see it's just a seller's name, address, seller name, date, date, time, sign. Um, but going taking that down to the city and getting it recorded uh, makes it just really clear that um, that you are in contract with the seller. OK, and they they can't just back out or somebody can't uh, swoop in and, and get the transaction from you. OK, so um, that is a, a very good step to take. And um, also is the assignment agreement. The assignment agreement comes into place when you have an open escrow. 
right? You have the signed purchase and sale agreement, you open your escrow, and now you need to assign that contract to the end buyer who's gonna be buying it, you know, buying that contract from you. This is the, the piece of paper that you fill out um, that allows that to happen, okay? So again, this is the assignment agreement. It's a one page form and um, I'll, I'll go through it here uh, really quickly. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so we have the address up top, and then we just, the name of the buyer, the city and the state of them, the assignment fee. Okay, so I was talking about this earlier in the training. The assignment fee gets disclosed here. Okay, so everybody knows whatever that assignment fee, whether it's $5 or $50,000, that gets put there. Okay, everybody signs it, and it's, and or I shouldn't say everybody signs it. You, the you, the wholesaler, and the end buyer, the person that's buying it from you. Those are the two signatures that go here, okay? Uh, the seller does not need to acknowledge this. This is just between you and the end buyer, okay? So really simple form. Again, you fill this out as soon as you get that end buyer into place. Once they said, yes, I want to, I'll take that property from you, that price works for me, that's great, then this is how you make it official, you assign it over to them. Okay. Once you have you've created that assignment agreement, and you're you uh, you go to escrow, um, and you're, you're everything's going great. Now, uh, one thing that that I want to cover here is that uh, in order to uh, attract a buyer, right? We had talked about this. You have to have a buyer's list. Well. How, once you get a property under contract, you have to then communicate to your buyer's list. Like, okay, I got a property under contract, escrow is open, now I need to go find the buyer to go get the, the buyer attached to it. So what you do is you put together a wholesale email. This is an example here, and it's a very simple email. It has the address, uh, you know, hello, this is, you know, check this property out, a quick little description of the property, um, photos, a link to a Google folder with photos in it. So you can see here, if you want to go to the photo album, here's the Google link there. And then same for the comps. So the comps that you pulled to do your analysis, make that a, a I put that into a Google Drive and then have the link on the email. So again, that just by clicking on the link, you can they can go to the photos and they can go see your comps for your further analysis. And obviously in the email here, you give them just the rough numbers, okay? what you're asking for, what the ARV is, how much renovation is going to be taking, and then a couple photos as you can see here. And then down at the bottom of the email, it says, please contact me via email or for an appointment. Da, 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 da. Okay. So these are the details that we send out. And when people respond, we'll go into greater detail on how to uh, close a transaction. Now, generally speaking, this is first come first serve. So when I send out a wholesale um, email to my buyer's list, it's whoever can get the non-refundable earnest money deposit back to me gets the deal, okay? And so I wanna make sure, I wanna slow down just a second and, and everybody needs to write this down. The first non-refundable earnest deposit secures the deal. You, you assign it to that person. The non-refundable earnest money deposit is the, the thing that, um, th that I consider great. If, if you give me a non-refundable earnest money deposit, great, I will assign this contract over to you. It is now yours, okay? And that happens in escrow, okay? Or your attorney, if you're in an attorney state. Um, but it's a non-refundable deposit from that buyer gets them the assignment contract, okay? There's no backing out for anybody here. Okay. It's really, really important how that, uh, how that goes. Okay. So this is the email that you send out to your buyer's list. This is how it looks. Very simple. Get it out there. You want your email to have all of the right information just like this so that your buyers can easily say yes. I want to make sure that that's very clear. The goal here is to communicate, put together this email so that your buyers can say yes easily. They know the address, they've seen the photos, they got the comps, they got the numbers, they understand what, what the timelines are. Based on that, they should be able to say yes or no from your email.